working class party, Mr. McCarthy. Gentleman from California, for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Before I begin, I want to thank um, Congressman Jason Smith for his work as the ranking Republican on budget. Mr. Speaker, I know the Democrats in the House are excited because all their work has even transpired all the way to Nevada because now the socialist Democratic wing of the party has taken over there as well. From H.R. 1 to voting to defund the police, House Democrats have abandoned any pretense of unity. They passed three major bills in one month with zero bipartisan support. Today, they plan to pass another. Like the others, it represents a missed opportunity for Congress to focus on the real needs of the American people. At $1.9 trillion in new spending, the so-called American Rescue Plan is the most expensive single bill in American history. Let's put that number in context, Mr. Speaker. If you put it in today's numbers, World War II cost our government $4.8 trillion. But if we pass this bill, our country's total relief, COVID relief spending, will now total $5.5 trillion. This so-called relief bill will end up costing every hardworking taxpayer in America more than $5,000 each. You send the government your tax dollars, but you only get a fraction of what you pay for at the very best. You know, we warned people on the internet about email scams. It's like the ones of those emails where you get a promise you'll get millions of dollars, but first you have to wire them some money. That's exactly what's happening here today. This is the reality of this bill before us. It showers money on special interests, but spends less than 9% on actually defeating the virus. But it gives San Francisco $600 million dollars essentially wiping out 92% of their budget deficit. Think about that. 9% on the virus. But Mr. Speaker, San Francisco, the home to our speaker, gets to wipe out 92% of their budget deficit. Where does that money come from? Well, every American is now going to pay more than $5,000 so we can send it to San Francisco and give them 92% of their budget deficit. Interesting how socialism works. In both the House and Senate, the only bipartisan vote has been against this. And after five relief bills, it is on track to be the first passed by strictly party lines. Mr. Speaker, I've heard people across the country say this bill today is costly, corrupt and liberal. Now, even the Biden White House agrees. It is very liberal. They called this the most progressive piece of legislation in history. For those who are watching, progressive means socialism. The same party that runs here and now the Democratic Party of Nevada is the Socialist Democratic Party. So let's be clear, this isn't a rescue bill, it isn't a relief bill, it's a laundry list of left-wing priorities that predate the pandemic and do not meet the needs of the American families. No wonder even House Democrats have said they are embarrassed by what is in it. And just this week, one of their own members said there is no question there's some waste in there. But they'll still vote for it anyways. In fact, if you are a member of the swamp, you do pretty well under this bill. But for the American people, it means serious problems immediately on the horizon. Consider this. Mr. Speaker, every person, and it will only be Democrats who vote for this, will cause a $36 billion cuts in Medicare starting this year. So what they choose to do is cut Medicare to those who need it, and send $600 million to San Francisco to pay for 92% of their budget deficit. 
or consider K through 12 education. Democrats say they need $130 billion to reopen schools, but their bill only allocates $6 billion to help schools this fiscal year. Two-thirds of the total funding for education won't even be spent until 2023 or later. But don't worry, San Francisco will get their money now. The schools need to wait. You have priorities. Do Democrats expect schools to reopen two years from now? I guess that's what they're saying with this bill. They have no plan to get children back in the classroom full time. This week marks the one year anniversary of school districts across the country switching to school behind a screen. We still don't know the full effects of this decision, but we do know keeping classrooms closed has created an education and mental health problem for students and parents. It has been a lost year for our children education. And even more devastating, one in four young adults have struggled with suicidal thoughts. Experience and scientific evidence say reopen schools now. It's, it's necessary and it's safe. Mr. Speaker, the last time this bill was on the floor, we offered an amendment to take that money for that subway just outside of San Francisco and put that money for the children's mental health and others. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, all the Democrats said no, that that subway by San Francisco was more important. But fortunately, we were able to remove that from the bill in the Senate. But luckily here, all the Democrats were able to think the priority is not children, it was San Francisco. But because Democrats are following the demands of special interests, not science, they're telling children to wait with no end in sight. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to applaud the Democrats on the other side because they put their money where their mouth is. They are telling the American public First, give me $5,000. I know you have to work harder. But what I'm going to do, because this is how socialism works, the Democrats are now going to decide who should get that money. And you know what? At least they give it to the people they respect the most. So let's go through this. Compared to the subsidies for the swamp, Democrats want to give federal employees who have not been laid off an extra $21,000 to help cope with virtual schooling. But if you're in the private sector or if you've been laid off, you don't get any of that. But what they want to do is take the money from you, give it to any federal employee who gets a bonus of $21,000, even though they've never been laid off work. So if you're in Washington in the swamp, you're part of the team. If you're a hard-working taxpayer, sorry, you just send a bill. But if you're in San Francisco, we're going to help pay for your deficit. What does it say to the millions of mothers and fathers who had to quit their job to take care of their kids at home and in school? Or compare that to Title X. This bill will allow organizations like Planned Parenthood to access $50 million. You know, Mr. Speaker, for decades, in this body, we respected one another's opinion. We created the Hyde Amendment that said we would not use taxpayers' funds for abortion. But when there's a pandemic and a socialist reign, we're going to charge you $5,000 regardless of how you feel about it, and that's where the money's going to be spent. Now, What the Democrats believe, schools should wait a couple years to get their money, but not Planned Parenthood. We've got to get that money there quick. Or compare it to how we fund states, Mr. Speaker. We've always had a formula. But Mr. Speaker, now that we're going to do this bill this way, where it's only one party rule, we're going to change the formula of how states can get their money. So let's analyze that. Democrats claim states and local governments need $350 billion. Now, where do they get that number? Well, if they read the headlines 
It would confirm states are not in financial distress. Nearly half saw an increase in revenue last year. And some, even including in my home state of California, they have a, bird, a budget surplus. Now, Mr. Speaker, I understand in Washington, they don't understand maybe the word what surplus means. That means you have more money, that you actually saved money. But what California is going to get is a windfall. Remember, San Francisco's in California. Mr. Speaker, just happens to be the Speaker's district as well. They have a $650 million deficit. Now, some of the challenges that San Francisco has, you see, if you're in San Francisco and you're homeless, they'll pay for your alcohol and they'll pay for your cannabis. So it costs more money. So that's why you have a deficit. But it's OK. Because we don't need to send the schools money today. We can send that years from now. But we need to get them 92% of their deficit taken care of. Now, we have a pandemic going on. And we're going to spend $1.9 trillion. But only 9% of, of that needs to go to COVID. Because San Francisco needs a lot of money. So what they have done now is they reward bad behavior. As for the few places that are facing shortfalls, they're actually punishing states that did it right. American taxpayers didn't vote for this, but thanks to the blue state payout, they are. The bill rewards bad behavior. Now, President Biden, he hasn't had a press conference, but he did say one time, and someone picked it up, show me what to cut. Well, the Senate actually cut tens of billions in spending from the Biden bill that the House passed. Now, I feel bad, Mr. Speaker, because Speaker Pelosi at first had like $112 million for that really important COVID subway just outside of San Francisco. Now, before that bill was able to get to the floor and the public found out about it, I guess it got good press because they added more money to it. It got to $140 million. Now, when it came to the floor here, there was a group of people, well, Mr. Speaker, let's just say who it was the Republicans. They thought a better priority was to spend that $140 million for children with mental health. Because we've watched study after study of children being left out of school, suicide, obesity. What about those children who have parents who don't work for the federal government? They don't get a bonus. And some of those parents had to quit their job to care for their children. So we thought, I know it's a small amount compared to $1.9 trillion. We thought, wouldn't that be a better use of the money? So we offered that on this floor, Mr. Speaker. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the Democrats said no to that, that this subway was more important than the children. Well, luckily, on the Senate side, they took that out. Whoa! Mr. Speaker, the American public thought for one moment, maybe the price could get a little lower that would the American public would have to pay, not $5,000 a person. Maybe they saved a little money. No, 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 no. You see, Mr. Speaker, the Democrats are in charge of the Senate too. So they now decided since they couldn't build the subway, they would just plus that money up. So where did they spend it? Well, Mr. Speaker, you got to give them credit. They took the same advice that the Democrats in the House had. You see, they added an extra $25,000 bonus for state employees. Let's just not reward the employees of the federal government that haven't been laid off. Let's reward the state employees who haven't been laid off. They get $25,000 bonus. Isn't that amazing? I guess the money, I wonder where it comes from. Oh yes, Mr. Speaker. It comes from the American people, the hardworking taxpayers. You see, they all need to send the government $5,000 so you can decide where to spend it. And if you're part of the swamp, pretty good reward, $25,000. And then they added $15 billion for taxpayer-funded health care subsidies that illegal immigrants are able and eligible for. Now, Mr. Speaker, you know this, Mr. Speaker, based upon your district and others. You know what's happening down in the border. President Biden has created a new border crisis. 
there's more people able to come in, not being tested with COVID, but lo and behold, they are now going to get subsidized health care. Luckily, we could spend more money on that, Mr. Speaker. There's probably much more coming now with the Biden border crisis. But will this help the people get back to work? Nope. Will this help students get back in the classroom? Nope. But will it help vaccines get to those who want it? Nope. But will it help take care of 92% of San Francisco's budget deficit? Oh, yes, it will. Yes, it will. It just throws out money without accountability. Even though there are a trillion dollars sitting there right now that have already been appropriated that can go out to help. But remember what Margaret Thatcher said, Mr. Speaker. Socialism. You'll eventually run out of other people's money. You've been doing a very good job of it so far. There is still work to do to defeat the virus. But it is clear we are nearing the final phase of the fight. For 12 terrible months, the American workers st has struggled through lockdowns, sacrificed through closure, and suffered through mandates. They persevered through it all. And now their government wants to take 5,000 more of it to make sure a federal employee that wasn't laid off, state employee that wasn't laid off, gets bonuses. And lo and behold, we've got to make sure San Francisco gets their deficit taken care of. Not in two years, like the schools, but today. President Trump, Operation Warp Speed, previous bipartisan efforts in Congress, and the American people worked tirelessly towards that outcome. President Biden was set up for success, both economically and with vaccines. But in that short amount of time, what have, Mr. Speaker, they've been able to accomplish down at the administration? They raised our gasoline price. So not only are you asking them to pay for this bill, you're taking more out of their pocket. And at the same time, by a stroke of a pen, he laid off millions of those workers. Mr. Speaker, I know this for sure. I know where you serve, and I know your passion for serving. I know the people in your district that are getting laid off for the XL pipeline. I know that wasn't your wish. It's harder to pay a bigger tax bill when you don't have a job. It's even worse when that job was taken away by your president. It's even worse when you go out to look for a new job and that same president has changed the policy along the border and now you're competing with people who are not even Americans and they're getting subsidized health care because of this bill. Mr. Speaker, I believe the American public wants something different. I believe they were, they were proud of the fact when we did something here that was bipartisan. I believe they were proud of the fact with Operation Warp Speed, we now have three vaccines. I believe they were proud when we were energy independent. I believe they were proud when they had more money in their pocket when they didn't have to pay so much for gasoline. But Mr. Speaker, Socialism has destroyed many countries. I just watched Venezuela offer new currency. What was it? A million, a billion dollar is worth 50 cents today. How did it all start? I've watched socialism grow in this country. I watched it grow in this body. I see within your own party, you no longer even fear to say that you're Democrats anymore, Mr. Speaker. You're Socialist Democrats. That's the lead of the Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, the head of the chairman of the Senate Budget Committee isn't even registered a Democrat. So why would you think what would be produced? Mr. Speaker, whoever votes for this bill, I want you to look the people in the eye. I want you to think about that hardworking taxpayer. I want you to explain to them why only 9% goes to defeat COVID. Why do they have to give $5,000 and you redistribute it to people who weren't even laid off? You give bonuses to the things you care most about. Mr. Speaker, I, I've heard our speaker say many times, where you spend your money shows your values. Well, she does represent San Francisco, Mr. Speaker. 
but we don't. 92% of the budget deficit of San Francisco is going to be paid with this bill. But for that, for that parent out there who is struggling, that for the last year that has had to be the teacher, the tutor, the coach, the music instructor, the recess, participant, help is not on the way. Help is not on the way. For those who have studied government and always thought working something bipartisan would be positive, that's no longer the case. For those who thought they could have a fair debate on a floor, they take away even the offer to have a, an amendment. And when we do, and we prioritize the children of this nation over a subway in a district not far from our speaker, the majority party walks in line. Mr. Speaker, we are so much better than this. We proved it five other times. What a difference it makes by a simple new control of a power that people want. Mr. Speaker, when you study history, there's a saying in a book called The Prince Machiavellian. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. The first indication to know if it happens, take a look at the vote. There'll be a bipartisan vote against this bill. You could wave to me, it's okay. I want you to wave to the American public when they have to wave away $5,000 so a federal employee that never been laid off gets a, gets a $21,000 to deal with their children being at home. Who's going to represent them? Who's going to be their voice? Mr. Speaker, I'll promise you this. We will never stop listening to those voices. We will never stop fighting for those voices. And there will be a day that that will be the majority voice in this House. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, I have not seen that this year. History will not be kind to what transpires today. But I still believe that America is a great hope for the future. That we're all conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that we are equal. But in this body, it seems as though only one can have a voice. But that will not last long, and that will change shortly. With that, I yield back. Gentlemen, uh, uh, our members are